Well, this video is for my good friend Charlie, W4MEC. Uh, I'm going to attempt to explain how I have my SDR connected. First of all, I'm using a uh, ICOM IC71 here as a receiver transmitter, uh, but for the SDR, it's actually a operating as a separate unit. The SDR is actually receiving signals directly from the antenna that this rig is using and the antenna is switched back and forth between the transceiver and the SDR. So here's the screen. Um, this is a 55 inch screen and as we can see here um, We've got the uh, frequency and all the parameters showing here and all the band switching and uh, in the middle is the uh, spectrum and you can see the cursor, the red cursor and we are on 7047 uh, listening to W1AW CW and the waterfall is directly below that and of course you can see the uh, signal on the waterfall matter of fact you can actually see the dots and dashes so um, this program here is called SDR Uno and uh, it's recommended to use this with the SDR Play unit that I have purchased from uh, Ham Radio Outlet. So down here I pulled it out from the shelf and this is how we have it connected. Uh, this is our uh, this is our SDR Play, and that's the name of the company, I guess. And this is RSP Duo um, Dual Tuner. So this is the top of the line that they sell. Uh, here's your USB port, and this USB cable goes to the USB uh, jack here on my laptop, as you can see here. All right, and then. On the antenna input side, we've got um, a 50 ohm antenna input here, and these are SMA uh, connectors. And uh, you have to get an adapter. I just happen to have uh, an SMA to uh, SO239 adapter here, so I end up with a, a female SO239. Uh, this is the other receiver, and these these two receivers are uh, identical, and, except for one thing. This one has the uh, the bias T output, and the bias T is a voltage that can be used to drive the preamplifier in a um, active antenna that has an amplifier in it. So it can be the antenna can be installed outside. And this will give it uh, 12 volts that it needs to, to run the preamp. That's really the only difference in these two separate receivers. This receiver also has an input for high impedance. And I think what it does is bypass some of the front end and it has a higher impedance and a little bit higher gain. So if you're going to use like a, a little loop or a piece of wire or something like that, you would use, you would use this jack here. So we come out of here and um, the uh, protection that I have here is from DX Engineering and these, um, I think it's a good idea to use these. Uh, they're a little pricey. There's one being sold on eBay for about, I think it's seven dollars including shipping. And it's got light bulbs in it to protect the uh, the input of this from real strong signals this thing probably cost about 75 bucks or so um, then this is the uh, receiver output on this now this this thing here is um, the MFJ 1708 and this they make several models uh, this is the latest one the 1708B Baker dash SDR and the difference in this and some of their early models is that this has two extra re relays in it. Um, they're one of them is used to uh, disconnect, uh, to transfer the antenna from receive to transmit. There's another one 
uh, being used to actually disconnect and ground the receiver input so it doesn't receive much signal. Now the only issue with that is timing and uh, you know you have to catch the signal before it can get to the receiver and relays generally aren't fast enough to do that so uh, that's why I've got the protection here and this this kind of stuff is recommended by the ARRL and their QST review to, uh, to give it an extra measure of protection. After all, you've got a nearly $300 device here that you don't want to blow the front end out on. So um, this jack here uh, is the one that goes to your transceiver and that goes to the antenna jack on your transceiver and this one goes to your um, actual antenna. So when RF uh, comes in here from your uh, in here from your transmitter, like when you key it up, uh, there's a sensing device in here that um, amplifies and provides a DC voltage to switch a uh, relay very quickly from transmit to receive. That is um, one way of doing it, and the other way is to manually activate that with this control jack here and if you ground that jack it'll throw the relays and and do it manually uh, that would be the probably the preferred way in some instances so um, so this this setup here I'm actually receiving what is on the antenna the other way of doing it is to tap into the IF of your receiver uh, on you know the receiver that you're using and you could do that with any receiver and uh, and then set the uh, SDR to receive the IF frequency and display whatever it gets on the on the screen and uh, you can synchronize it with your transceiver and so forth and it works fine uh, the only poss the only problem is there's a limitation of the width of the spectrum that it could show because in order to get to the IF uh, it has to go through the front end uh, RF filters of the receiver and um, normally those aren't too broad so you may be limited to you know several kilohertz instead of this and this will this will display up to um, 10 megahertz at one time Normally you wouldn't want to do that, but I can zoom out to, to 10 megahertz and show you a big chunk of spectrum on this. Um, so now in controlling the transceiver uh, from the, uh, the software, you need an interface called OmniRig. It's a little piece of software. And that little piece of software communicates with the transceiver via cat commands and whenever the uh, transceiver is tuned manually with a knob or if we change frequencies on the uh, SDR uh, they are synchronized and they follow each other and so OmniRig is your interface between your SDR software and your radio and that is what most of these um, setups use. There's another piece of software that I like for SDR and it's called uh, HD SDR and in some ways I like it a little better than this but this actually seems to receive better. You know after all this is a software defined radio so uh, it's tailored more toward uh, working correctly uh, with this and now if I want to receive two radios at the same time I can I can open up another uh, instance of this particular program and uh, squish things up and actually fit them both on the same screen and then I'll I'll hear both or I can mute one and play the other and tune one and tune the other and so forth so uh, that's uh, that's good for uh, you know monitoring two different bands at once so I can go up to the two meter band with this and I can monitor uh, VHF. Uh, there's also a, 
uh, capability of monitoring airplanes, a aircraft uh, transponders. Uh, that's even built into this software. I don't know anything about it, but supposedly it's uh, used for locating uh, aircraft position and that kind of thing. And that's that's built in here and uh, apparently ready to go. So, so again, uh, down here, um, there's the uh, the power supply that I'm using for the SDR. It's way overkill. And um, uh, so there's where your uh, DC power comes in right there. That's the plug that was supplied by MFJ. Check check it out. Look at that. And that's not <laughs> so. Um, I think, uh, oh, this jack right here, this is a muting jack that uh, when you activate the relays when, from transmitting, uh, this will either short or open depending on how you have the strap set on the inside. So you can actually break the speaker lead or short the speaker out or do something else. Now, if you want to run a boat anchor uh, rig with this, um, what you could what you could do is um, use this as a um, as your receiver and um, you have your uh, antenna connect here and this would go to your uh, transmitter and the, your power from your transmitter would come through here and go through the relays and come back out I mean go through here through the relays and come back out here don't want to get this backwards. This goes to the uh, transmitter, uh, and this goes to the antenna. <laughs> okay, so um, it it would be a, a nice little setup for uh, say using a, a DX60 or something, and you want a good receiver. You could use it with this. Now, naturally, you're not going to have any control over the frequency of the DX60, so those would be independent. Um, so I guess uh, that's about it, um, and uh, Charlie, uh, if you're watching, I hope you can get this set up and uh, hope it all made some sense.